time for Uncancelled. And this is where Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. And the British bashing corporation has faced a series of accusations of being the biased broadcasting corporation in recent times, with Gary Lineker's outspoken rants on illegal migration dragging the beeb into bother just weeks ago. And the pattern seems to be repeating with wildlife presenter Chris Packham, the latest household name, to throw impartiality out the window by brazenly urging his 600,000 Twitter followers to join the Great Unwashed at the Extinction Rebellion's latest unhinged and damaging demonstration outside Parliament this weekend. Watch. It's the big one. Yes, it's the big one that we've all been waiting for. We can change the world to make it a better place. I'm going to be there on the 22nd. It's Biodiversity Earth Day. Chipping in on that account. I hope to see you. It's really important at this time that we all recognise that we all have a role to play in making sure that our planet has a safe and secure and healthy future. So please come along to the big one. I think I'll pass, mate. But joining me tonight to run over the nuttiest news of the week, comedy legend uh, himself, a former BBC star. The BBC was very different in those days. Uh, Jim Davidson. So look, Jim, I, I don't think Packham uh, should be sacked. I don't think you think he should be sacked either. But you have to admit, no. I mean, it's just a left wing activist organisation now, right? Can't they just admit it? Well, it, it does stand for bring back communism, doesn't it, really? And we <laughs> yes. all pay for it. Do you think Do you think they care about ratings? Do you think that how good is our programme? They don't care. What's he called? Come and join me with the big one. Well, he sounds like a big one. And, you know, all these activists are starting to get on my nerves. I've cleaned that up a little bit. And, and you know, if, if you had a look me at too. all them poor, sobbing people that were at the Grand National, they all look alike, don't they? They all sort of look like Jeremy Corbyn clones that have gone wrong. And you never mind but trying to protect animals. They look as if they should eat a few. They all look like they're real skinny little wretches. Dreadful people. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> vegans aren't they? The BBC. We've got to get rid of the BBC. I, mm. I actually paid my licence the other day and I went to confession afterwards and broke down and had a mental breakdown. But it's only fear of being nicked. Um, but I, I just think it's silly. Dan, imagine what TV show me and you could make, what TV station, never mind Ustream or, or GB News, with that BBC money, we could rule the world, mate. I know, and they don't deserve the money. Couldn't agree more. Uh, but look, on to TV that normal people watch, uh, it's been revealed that a remake of the cult 90s show Baywatch could be in the works. I'm mm. excited about yep. this. But apparently the issue, Jim, is that in the woke new world... Uh, the showrunners actually want to cast plus-sized actors and sort of woke yes. trans characters and things like that. But Julie Birchall in The Sun has pleaded with producers to cast fitties, not fatties. Uh, so, Jim, what would be your choice for a relaunched Baywatch? <laughs> Well, I don't think you could now have them old red Volkswagen Beetle bonnet suits uh, running along and, uh, and, and those beautiful girls, because it doesn't reflect what, uh, what real life is about. We should have some big-boned girls from Essex. You know the ones you see normally at Ladies' Day at Anfield, cocking their legs up? Or there's always the pictures in the paper of revellers in Leeds or Newcastle, or these size 22 girls trying to squeeze into a size 16 frock. You know, this is what we want. With that, Gemma Collins, she could be the new She's Pamela beautiful. Anderson. She's she? got amazing It's a widescreen TV now. You'd get them all in. And, of course, who's going to play the Hoff? It's you, Dan boy. Oh, my goodness. I can see you Imagine in a me pair of red speedos. speedos. Yeah. Them old oh. budgie smugglers running along the beach with it all bouncing. Oh, I mean, the top of the ratings. You're giving folk nightmares, Jim, to be totally honest. <laughs> now, look. I, I, I know. I had a slight little tick myself. Yeah, no, don't. No one envisage that, please. Uh, look, Jim, Nadine Dorries, former culture secretary. This is very significant, actually. She's launched uh, a new Daily Mail column this week. It was very good. But she slammed ITV's fading star, Philip Schofield, for his, quote, intimidating behaviour on the set of this morning. So, Jim, uh, why do ITV insist on sticking with this repulsive, reviled bloke rather than replacing him with the far more popular and certainly less horrible Alison Hammond? 
Yeah, Alison Hammond and uh, and that other lady with the blonde hair and when, when you dye those yeah. black root bits in. I, I think those two are fantastic. Yeah. Schofield, he just waits for his altar cue to come up, doesn't he? Sits there, not listening to anybody. I fell out with him a little bit. Uh, but, but having said that, I don't think he should be sacked because of, of what he is coming out, whether he was, you know, rotten no. to his wife. And, and was deceiving people, and, and he certainly shouldn't be punished for the sins of his brother. However, he should be punished for being a crap entertainer. Would yeah. you employ him, Dan? Absolutely not. And he's awful. He, Look, he's really horrible. Why did you he, fall out with he's him, He's worse Jim? than Andrew Doyle. <laughs> <laughs> no one's worse than Andrew Doyle. Joking. I we love, love the man. Andrew Doyle. Um, me he too. Could be in Bay- what? He could be <laughs> stuck down the front of your speedo. I wonder if he's on headliners today. Uh, Jim, why did you fall out with Scoff? Well, it was when I fell out with that dreadful man on uh, I was in that Hell's Kitchen and they edited it to make me look as if it oh, was all homophobic. Yes, I remember and that, he, yeah. Yeah, and, and so Philip said, oh, hello, thanks for coming on. Fantastic, good to see you, Jim, wonderful. OK, three, two, one, go. And he turned on me. He put that oh. sort of face on. He had the face look at me and really steamed into me. The writing was on the wall there, Dan. Oh, I wish we could interview Schofield, Jim. That would be fun. Uh, Look, I want to go stateside now, cross over to America, where Disney, which has gone from being uh, the nicest company in the world to the wokest, has actually hit back into Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and his recent legislation that prohibits teachings about sexual orientation in Florida primary schools by announcing Mickey and Minnie will be dressed in rainbow-coloured pride outfits to celebrate LGBTQ plus culture and to stick a middle finger up to their local Mm -hmm. governor. Uh, So, Jim, why are Disney so desperate to prove themselves as the Wokers Corporation? Well, you know, being in the streaming uh, business myself, and Disney have now got this streaming channel, and when you have a streaming channel, you have to feed the monster. It eats up material. They are hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging people signing up to them. So they've got to really try and rebrand themselves. Now, Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse, I never liked that Minnie Mouse. She had awful shoes and skinny legs. I mean, seriously, she was like Esther Ranson going to a disco. But but I just don't like them. I'd like to take Minnie and Mickey Mouse with their rainbow shirts and whatever they want to wear and stick them in an old Tom and Jerry. You remember when Tom and Jerry was yeah, funny yeah. before it went woke? And get that cat to eat them two mice. That would be it for me. Get rid of them. <laughs> I never found them funny at all. And so what? what's to happen with the rest of Disney? What happened to zippity doo da? That, the song of the South, that's gone. Go woke, go broke, Dan. People are getting sick of it now. Oh, they Mini are. Mini Mouse in a rainbow frock. What's going on? I know. They are. They're sick of it. Uh, Jim Davidson, uh, Britain's third greatest comedian. I've got to say that because obviously number one, Andrew Doyle. Number two, John Cleese. But you're number three. You're number three. OK, Jim Davidson. <laughs> but you're my number one. by Scott Caporo. We love him. <laughs> Jim Davidson. We will speak very soon. Thank you so much, Jim.